everyone, this is Celine from Blue Cala Patterns and welcome to video one for the Begonia Drawstring Backpack. Now my goal with this pattern was to um, come up with something that was very quick to sew and that was also very inexpensive to make, well as much as possible. So there is no hardware whatsoever in this bag. The only thing you're going to need is uh, cotton, so quilt weight cotton, a very lightweight fusible woven interfacing, and two zippers. So the before I get to the pieces that you're going to need to cut, uh, for the zippers I'm using um, handbag zippers. So these are 4.5 or number 5 zippers. This is a question I get a lot. So when you're figuring out, for me, in terms of designing patterns, I'm really concerned about the width of the zipper because when I'm doing all the measurements and everything, I'm counting on the height of the zipper being a certain, like being a certain, sorry, the width of the zipper being a certain size. So when I say a handbag zipper or a 4.5 or a number five, I want the zipper to be a total of one and a quarter inches wide. So you need two zippers. Either you have two pre-made zippers that are six inches. I believe these are kind of difficult to find in a handbag zipper. So I'm using zipper tape. And if you're using zipper tape, you need to cut two pieces that are seven inches long. Okay, so that's the only thing you're going to need apart from fabric and interfacing. Now, I know that not a lot of people, well, I think it's kind of 50-50 really. Some people really love cutting their pieces to measurements. Other, people's really prefer, other people really prefer pattern pieces. Since my goal here was to make this as inexpensive as possible, there are no pattern pieces. All the pieces that you need can be cut to measurements very easily. There's not a lot of pieces to cut. If you look on page two, this is it. This is all you're cutting. And some of them you don't even, you're not cutting uh, all the different types. So you're really not cutting a lot of pieces. There's also a lot of these that are optional. So going through the cutting chart, I'm just gonna go through the pieces that you need to cut. Now, obviously, I'm not going to tell you what the measurements are. They're in the cutting chart. Um, you need to purchase the pattern in order to get those measurements, but it's really not difficult. And I use my clear quilting ruler to do cutting. It makes it so quick and easy. And you'll see why when you see the measurements because I use this as a guide for most of them. So, I'm gonna show you quickly a sample bag that I've made just so that you know what pieces I'm talking about. So I did not finish the strap on this bag, but the body of the bag itself is done. Okay, so looking at the cutting chart, I'm gonna go over what the name of each part is. Upper zipper panel, lower zipper panel, and then inside, zipper pocket lining here and here, okay? And I tried to do this a very fast way where the zipper pocket lining pieces are just one big piece and you sew down the middle to separate in two pockets. Bottom, drawstring connector, this casing at the top, that's your drawstring casing. This is the, what did I call it, exterior back panel. And then inside you have your lining. That's it. It's very simple. Oh, sorry. And your shoulder strap. So these are your drawstrings. Okay. So these are the pieces that I have cut. So here's my upper and lower zipper panel. So that's going to be above and below the zippers on the front of my bag. Same fabric for the exterior back panel. My drawstring casings, same, same fabric. Now, one note about these. I kind of went back and forth on these in terms of, do I interface them, do I not interface them? After doing many tests and asking my, um, my testers to do different combinations, the bag will cinch better if there is no interfacing on these pieces whatsoever. 
However, if you're not that concerned about it cinching closed completely and you prefer to have a little bit of interfacing, each on each side the casing has will need two of these pieces. If you really you really want to interface, only interface one piece for each set of two, okay? Don't do any more than that. Your bag will not cinch closed whatsoever. Here are my zipper tabs for my zipper, and that's they're just going to be in the middle in between the two. So they will be like this, and then I'll be putting those there. Here are my uh, zipper pocket lining pieces. Now, I used cork for some pieces. You do not need to do that. I just wanted to get a little fancy here, but it's not necessary. You can use cotton for absolutely everything. So I used cork for my drawstring connectors. And for the bottom of my bag, I'm also going to use the cork. For the lining, here are my two lining pieces, okay? Everything that I'm showing you has already had fusible woven interfacing applied to the wrong side. Use a lightweight interfacing, and I would rec highly recommend that you use woven because if you don't, I think your bag is going to end up creasing um, and wrinkling a lot uh, whenever from just from uh, cinching it shut. So I'm using my Blue Calo uh, light interfacing, and to give you a weight comparison, it's very similar to. Uh, the Pellon Shape Flex, okay? So that's the kind of weight that you're looking for. For these shoulder straps or the drawstring, whatever you want to call it. So you need really long pieces, obviously, because they need to loop through the drawstring casings. So usually quilt weight cotton is only about 42 to 44 inches wide. So you're going to need to cut four strips and then you'll join them and then you can cut them to the length in the pattern or wait till your bag is finished and if you have one of those retractable uh, measuring tapes pass it through and measure and try it on and to, just to see if the length works for you now i went also back and forth whether or not to interface these i tried without i tried with i think i prefer with but again use a very light weight because you're going to be folding this and it's going to be four layers thick so if you're using something heavier, it might be a bit too bulky to sew up. So again, a very lightweight interfacing. So I have four strips and I'll show you a bit later. I'm going to join those and press them into straps. Uh, now one important note as well, if you want to be able to wash the bag, um, there's nothing on here that would prevent you from washing it. And uh, actually even with the zippers, it should be fine. I've never tried washing metal, but I'm assuming it's fine. Uh, these, this is obviously some of my zipper tape. I've made, I've used this zipper tape on clothing that has been washed multiple times and it comes out looking great. It never, the appearance never changes. Just if you want to wash the whole bag though, you want to make sure that you've pre-washed and dried your fabrics. Uh, just in case there's any shrinking, I prefer to, to wash them ahead of time. I'm not going to be washing my bag, so I'm not pre-washing uh, my fabric. Okay, so I'm just going to finish uh, um, interfacing my straps and then uh, we're going to get started on video two where we start assembling, um, the. we'll do the front panel of the bag first with the, the zipper pocket.